For over 20 years, I've dedicated my life to bringing you the very best selling marketing and business building strategies to keep your business thriving. Get ready to experience the success you've been searching for. Welcome to the Tom Ferry Show. Hey, thanks for watching the Tom Ferry Show, episode 38. Now, last week, I came out really strong, really aggressive. I said to you that there's gonna be a whole bunch of people in real estate that show up on January 1st, 2nd, 3rd, 4th, probably like the 15th, slightly hungover and flat broke. And the reason why is they weren't willing to commit. You've heard me say in the past, there's only two kinds of people on this planet, people that are interested in success and people that are committed to success. You've heard me say, people that are interested, it's very simple, right? They love to talk about being successful, they like to talk about doing the work, and they only seem to ever do it when it's convenient. Do you know some people like that? Maybe the person watching right now. We wanna break that habit. We only wanna do what the committed people do. You know what they do? They write their plan, they follow their goals, they execute every single day, they do whatever it takes every single day to crush the fourth quarter to make sure that when you start the new year, you start it in momentum and you love and enjoy the holidays because you were willing to do the work to make sure that the holidays and your new year were radically, radically successful. So I'm gonna assume you are not making the choice to be flat broke. I'm gonna assume that you're watching this because you're like, all right, coach, I'm in. I wanna do whatever it takes. Well, I can tell you right now, I'm gonna discuss with you five ways for you to turbocharge your uh, prospecting and you know telephoning efficiency so you can start adding in those new habits, adding in those new little distinctions that will up your results while you're crushing Q4. And then in the next few weeks, I'm gonna help you establish your goals and your plans so you can get it all out of the way and finish strong and be ready to go for next year. So let's talk about it. Um, how good are you on the phone? Like, like really, really, like how good are you on the phone calling your past clients in Sphere? Do you start with a level of confidence, with swagger, with energy, with enthusiasm? You love to do it, you can't wait to do it. Like, oh, oh, where's the phone? I can't wait. Or are you like so many people I talk to that have this like story in their head about a fear of the telephone? Well, I'm gonna assume that there might be someone watching that has those fear of rejection thoughts. What if they say no? What if they reject me? What if they don't like me? What if they think I'm desperate for money? Right, all those stories, I wanna get you over that hurdle and make it powerful and effective quickly and we can do it in just five steps. So, I'm gonna give you a little framework. My first three years, I made a little over 125,000 sales calls. I was working, you know, five, most of the time, six days a week plugging away at 125 to 150 outbound calls a day, talking to 30, 40 people every single day. And you know, the first year I made 67,500. And I was excited, because remember the year before, I was working at a grocery store from midnight to nine with purple hair, so I tripled my income. Well, in tripling my income, the next year, I was like, I wanna triple my income again. I wanna go to like 190,000. And guess what I earned the second year? about 67.5 again. Why? Because I tried the same techniques again, thinking the same thing might get me three times the income. When was the last time the same activities got you three times the results? Well, I was very immature, I was very naive, so what did I do? I started to search out coaches and training, and I started testing, right, ABT, always be testing, new things that I can do to be more effective on the telephone, and I wanna give you the five because by the time I was done, I was moved into management, training now tens, twenties, 30, 40, 50 salespeople, and ended up making that a part of my career path, showing people how to be effective over the phone. So this is my little gift to you. Here we go, you ready? Number one thing, if you wanna crush it over the telephone, you gotta schedule it and you gotta tell people. I know that sounds simple. You're like, Tom, you've told me before, if it's not in my schedule, it doesn't exist. Well, this is just a reminder, but if I don't see nine o'clock until 11 o'clock in your calendar every single day if it's not in the schedule. It doesn't exist. You're never gonna get it done. The minutia of real estate's always gonna happen. Somewhere in the background you're like, should I make calls? No. That's what you're gonna hear in your head. That's not good. So you gotta schedule it, but the second part is you gotta tell people. 
So you gotta tell your five, six buddies around the office, hey, so check it out. Sarah, I'm gonna make some calls from between 9 and 11. You wanna join me? No? Okay. Taz, I'm gonna make calls from 9 and 11. Oh, you wanna join me? Awesome. Okay, we'll do it together. Hey, Eddie, you get all the people around you engaged. You tell your broker, you tell your manager, you tell your spouse, you tell your kids. You get everybody to understand that you have no interest in being flat broke in January, so you got to put in the time now and do the right things today. Call on your past clients, call on your sphere, call on whoever you choose to call to make sure that your success is there and certain in the future. So that's the first one. Second one is, I learned a long time ago, you got to stand up, right? You got to stand up because we all know, right, when you break down communication, it was like, you know, 55% of your total communication is the way you move your body, and we also know that 38% is your tone, how the words sound. So if I go, Sarah, or I go, Sarah, it's the same word, but the inflection, the difference in my tonality completely alters how the person's hearing and interpreting my message. Well, it all starts first with 55% is your body. Your body impacts your tonality. If I say to you, are you convinced that I'm the right agent for the job? Just that subtle little shift in the way I move my body. If I say to you, are you as convinced as I am that I'm the right person for the job? Just the fact that I'm nodding no and I get a little, you know, slumpy over in my, you know, physiology, it kills my swagger. You want to stand up, be effective. Also, by the way, it impacts your breathing. Everything is more effective when, uh, effective? Let's not even edit that. That's just hysterical. Effective when I'm standing up. So stand. Number three, all the money is in, can you answer it? Can you answer it? Don't say conversion. I know that's what you want to say. Long time Tom Ferry show follower. I love it. All the money's in prep. See, I love hearing this. Hey, did you make your calls? Oh no, I just, you know, I'm still getting organized. Looking, all the money is in saying, I've got my database and it's ready to go. I've got all my leads and they're ready to go. I have every person who's ever been to an open house on a list and I'm going to call every one of them and find out where they're at. I'm going to call uh, every past client I sold a house to two to seven years ago because of the appreciation and I've got a specific message just for them. I'm going to call all expireds, whoever you want to call, but you never want to be in a position like this. Okay, I'm going to make my calls. Um, who should I call? The second you say, who should I call? You're done. Finito. It's over. All the money is in having too many people to call and not enough time. You set it up that way where you've got all these lists, all these people you want to reach out to, all these customers, all these prospects, all these opportunities, and there's always way more people than you have time, then you're going to crush it on the phone. Uh, number four, <laughs> don't practice on your clients. Oh my goodness. On the last video, I gave a shout out to Stefan Swanpool. Um, and he had shared with me that NAR quote, like, you know, 80 whatever percent of all people that get into real estate have no sales and negotiation skills whatsoever. And I used to jokingly always say, and most maintained it. I don't get it. Why we would practice on a customer, not practice with a buddy. Why we wouldn't just practice by ourselves. You know, I do seminars all day, every day. And when I'm sitting backstage getting ready, you know what I'm doing? I'm going through the impact that I'm practicing. I'm role playing. So when I get on stage, I can only think about you. See, the human mind can only think about one thing at a time. So if I'm thinking about what I'm going to say next, I'm not listening. I'm not listening for the subtleties, your tonality, the way I said, so have you had any thoughts of selling? And I'm reading it from a script because I didn't practice. Have you had any thoughts of selling? And you go, well, you and I both know if I'm really paying attention that, well, probably means they've been thinking about it. Now the question is, am I willing to share it with you? Well, not really. Yes, you have. If I practice my scripts, if I know what to say, if I've internalized the dialogue, by the way, remember over here, only 7% of your total communication are the words that you use. Only 7% of your total communication are the words. 38% is how they sound, the tonality, and 55% is the way you move your body. If I want total congruency, body's moving right, tonality is good, words are memorized, so I can put all my focus and all my concentration in my heart and in my head on the person I'm talking to. Does that make sense? You've been in situations before where you're having conversations with people and they can't look you in the eyes because they're processing, they're waiting to talk, they want to just start speaking. They're not really listening. 
don't practice on your clients. Please don't, please, please stop practicing on your clients and practice before you get on the phone instead. And then the last one, if you absolutely want to crush it, and this is where early on in my career and even today, I'm such a huge fan of gamifying things, right? And creating healthy competition where maybe there's a winner, maybe there's a loser, or maybe we both win and it's just like the lesser of the, you know, the wins, if you will. What I know is this. If you ask two, three people around your office right now and you say, hey, I have no interest in being broke come January. How about you? They're going to go, huh? You're going to wake them up out of the coma, right? Oh, me neither. So let me tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to call five past customers in Sphere every single day and I'm going to make five new contacts every day. I'm going to follow up on my open house leads. I might knock on doors around a recent listing or sale. I might, you know, whatever. Like, you know me, there's no wrong way, but I'm making 10. And you say that to your buddy and they go, Oh yeah, and you and I both know every 40 conversations equals one sale. Every 40 conversations equals one sale right now. That's how frothy the market is. Man, that means in, t in four days I'm making 40 conversations. That means I basically generated a transaction minimum. This is kind of exciting. You say that to your buddy, they're gonna go, hey, that sounds good. And then we say, hey, I'll make you a deal. Whoever books the most appointments this week the other person's gotta buy the other person lunch, right? Loser buys lunch. Or you really up your game, like Peggy Lynn Spiker and James Suarez, a little DC versus LA battle they had a few months back, where they basically said, whoever books the most appointments in this time frame, I think it was like loser had to buy a suit or a really expensive handbag. And you know what's funny? You and I know this. What is it about us in sales? We will work our faces off for a suit for 50 bucks, for the handbag, or because we want to avoid the pain of doing it, and we sometimes forget about the hundreds of thousands of dollars you create in commissions because you simply did your job. Now, I'm going to ask you of the five, what are you going to do? We're not doing this. No action is a silent choice to be flat broke in January. So you got to pick, what are the, of the five, which one are you going to do so you're in a situation come January where you may be like, oh man, I don't like that Tom Ferry guy. He was grinding on me every single week, but you'll love me because your listing pipeline, your escrows and pendings, and your opportunities are absolutely out of this world. So get in action. And by the way, send me a text, send me a tweet, post something on Facebook, post something on YouTube, and let me know, hashtag crush Q4, are you in? Thanks so much for watching. Remember always, your strategy matters, and now more than ever, your passion rules. Thanks for watching. If you love what you're seeing here, then click the button below to join our online community absolutely free. Thanks so much. <laughs>